तो आप हमें बता सकते हैं कि जो बलात्कार हो रही हैं इसको कैसे रोक सकते हैं आप हमें अपनी राय दे सकते हैं श्रोताओं की जो आग लग रही है दोष किसका है किसको हम दोष दे सकते हैं इस पर हम किसको दोष दें ड्राइवर्स को या फिर पुलिस को नमस्ते फीजी देश की धड़कन वीडियो फीजी टू आरोप मैं मोहिनी हमारे साथ में शामिल हो जाइएगा दृष्टिकोण प्रोग्राम में हर सोमवार से शुक्रवार तक रात सात से आठ बजे तक दृष्टिकोण प्रोग्राम में Tonight, still no progress in Syria as Fijian troops spend their fourth night in rebel captivity. Elections office ready to roll out with pre-polling. And 15 new ministers ordained into Methodist Church. Good evening, I'm Amrita Priyadarshni and this is FBC News. The Fiji military forces is preparing to send more men to replace 44 troops held captive by rebel groups in Syria. In a media briefing this morning, military commander Brigadier General Mosese Tikoitonga says the RFMF remains committed to its peacekeeping duties in the Golan Heights. As for the troops in captivity, there's been no progress. Chanel Sivan reports. These are the first pictures to come out of Syria showing the 44 Fijian troops who've been held captive by the Al-Nusra Front since Wednesday night. The authenticity of these pictures has not been confirmed. However, it is circulating widely on the Internet and is sourced from a website purportedly run by the rebel group. Military Commander Brigadier General Mosese Tikoitonga confirms the situation has not uh, changed. Sorry to say at this stage that uh, things have not uh, been better. Uh, in fact, uh, the whole of UN is now under... Uh, uh, siege from the, um, the anti-government uh, armed elements. Um, I think it's uh, now in the news that the Philippines are, uh, are withdrawing from their positions uh, under fire uh, uh, as we speak um, and uh, also the position that they're holding have been continuously harassed. Uh, it is important for us to note that uh, the force commander and his negotiation team um, are trying to work uh, with the uh, Filipinos and with the, uh, the armed elements that are attacking the Filipinos to come to some kind of truce. Because uh, if it doesn't, then it can affect um, the release or otherwise of our personnel. <coughs> He continues to stress that the men are well and this has been confirmed both by the UN sources and contacts of the Fiji contingent in Syria. It's unknown if the men are even still in Syria. Tikwe Tonga says the commanding officer who decided not to engage in a firefight with the rebels made the right choice to surrender to the Al-Nusra rebels because the lives of the 44 men were at stake. Uh, with him on the ground and 44 men under his command, uh, looking down the barrel of 250 to 200 uh, uh, arm elements um, with uh, you know, five or six times more weaponry that they have. Um, the questions that were running through the commander's mind um, was do I become a tiger and fight or do I become a cat and fight another day? Uh, and I think this, uh, those kind of situations, uh, only the commanders on the ground can make the decisions. And he would have considered um, those things, whether they stand and fight and get half of the men killed, or does he take this option? And I fully support whatever decision is taken. Syria is in the middle of a civil war and the Al-Nusra Front cropped up in 2012 and is heavily backed by Al-Qaeda. The RFMF expects the Al-Nusra to make demands of the UN soon, using our troops as leverage. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. On to elections, the Fijian Elections Office is in the middle of pre preparations for pre-polling, which begins on Wednesday. It targets parts of Fiji which are hard to reach and need special attention so that voters don't lose out. 
Temporary polling centers will be set up in remote locations in interior parts of Fiji, in the maritime zones and in places with difficult terrain. This way, people who live away from towns, cities and developed communities will be covered in the polling. Uh, Fiji has a difficult uh, geographical uh, setup. Um, it is uh, not just a continent. We are made up of several islands and some of these islands have uh, difficulty in getting to it. Uh, sometimes on a calm day the seas are rough still um, and uh, you would have difficulty getting to the island and therefore we are not taking any chances come 17th of September uh, if we are not able to berth at their jetty they might not get to vote so we are taking a, a we are taking the polling to them earlier to allow them to exercise their right and not be worried whether the boat will actually reach us on 17th September or not. Elections office staff will be set up in community halls, schools and even sheds in all four divisions and the supervisor of election Mohammed Salim says voters should be well aware of when pre-polling will take place in their area. Uh, we've started packing. Uh, we haven't yet packed the ballot paper. Uh, we will do that in the presence of party agents but for other kits and uh, equipment, we are getting ourselves prepared. We're currently work is going on as we speak. In some areas, pre-polling will only run for two hours because of the small number of voters, while remote communities with more voters have been allocated an entire day. It will run from this Wednesday up to the 15th of September. All pre-poll ballot boxes will be brought back and kept under security until 17th of September. And on 17th of September, uh, after 6 p.m., we will organize counting. Counting will be done in front of observers in polling agents, and we will be then releasing results per polling venue uh, in the pre-poll zone. So um, that is the arrangements we are doing. As one team prepares to roll out pre-polling, another team is simultaneously packing postal ballots to send to more than 12,000 voters in Fiji and around the world. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. The proposal by the National Federation Party to reduce VAT if it gets into Parliament could possibly see an increase in personal income tax and corporate tax. This comes amid calls for the party leader Biman Prasad to clearly explain how he is going to make up for a shortfall of $300 million if he gets to reduce VAT by 5%. Chanel Sivan tells us more. I'm Fiji's leading economists agree if VAT is reduced by 5%, there will have to be measures taken to make up the loss in $300 million in lost revenue. Until now, NFP leader and economist Biman Prasad has maintained that the loss will be made up by an increase in consumer spending. But now he is suggesting what the country's leading economists have been saying all along. A reduction in VAT will eventually mean an increase in tax. We will not uh, change uh, the uh, taxation system in the 2015 budget, but going into the 2016 budget, we will review both the income tax and the company tax to see uh, where we are in terms of our revenue policy. The revenue and expenditure policy is a political decision by any government. We, when we reduce the bet from 15 to 10 percent, we know how we are going to change the budgetary uh, allocation. The current income tax threshold is $16,000, while the corporate tax rate stands at 20%. Uh, we will cut uh, government wastages by about $100 million, and we are also saying that uh, reducing VAT from 15 to 10% does not necessarily mean that we will have the same amount of reduction in the revenue that government collects. So we are hoping that uh, with, with a much better uh, forecast for growth after the election, 5 or 6% within one or two years, we believe that uh, with 10% VAT we would be able to collect uh, the, the uh, amount of revenue shortfall that would come in the reduction anyway. The NFP also says they will save some more money by closing some overseas missions. FBC News understands the Bureau of Statistics is about to release some new growth figures which will significantly surpass the 3.8% projected for this year. This positive growth could fly in the face of the NFP and other political parties' efforts to swing the voters on economic policies just two weeks before the polls, a swing that increasingly seems to balance on the question of lower VAT at the expense of higher taxes. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. Stay with us after the break. We speak with supermarket florists in our successful Fijian segment.
how are you doing, Fiji? Yes, indeed, fast approaching. Well, the major bulletin, but before we even talk about the major bulletin, what about my little news flash? Oh my gosh, please don't let him get started on that again. Getting on the bus yesterday, <laughs> and then he tells me, brother, move on to the other seat, because we can fit two people where you're sitting. <laughs> Hey, you can't blame the dude for being honest, okay? <laughs> There's nothing honest about what he said. Hi, I'm Pivin. And I'm Fina. Your daybreak duo on Gold, Gold FM. FM. From Mondays to Fridays. From 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Turn, Turn us on. on. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Fifteen new Methodist church ministers have been ordained this morning. Having completed six years of probation in the church system, the ministers now begin a life of service to the church and its people. Savara Tambua has more. These 15 men and women have dedicated their lives to the church. I'm uh, happy and I thank the Lord for being with me. It's uh, been a challenging six years. The ordination was an emotional affair for Reverend Dema Vakanabwe, the first female minister from the Lomaiviti province. She is the widow of the late Reverend Savenada Vakanabwe, who taught at the Wilevu Theological College until his passing away. She says serving the church without her husband isn't easy. I had that feeling that he was present with me. I thank the Lord for his calling that has given me the strength to continue the calling that we have from the very beginning uh, together as a family. Church ministers who was ordained had to undergo various exams before being accepted as reverends in the Methodist Church. They undergo three years of uh, theological training at our local theological college, followed by three years of practical field experience. Following the, those six years during which, uh, while they're in the field, they're also doing exams every year. And uh, if they pass their exams that year, they move on to the next year and the next year and the next year. The church will also have voluntary communication offices in each division to inform the church administrators on what's happening in various divisions. Sawera Tambua, FBC News. Bread Bank has opened a new branch in the Nandi in a bid to reach more customers around the country. Akasita Tale was at the launch. Bread Bank services are now available to the people of Nandi with the opening of this new facility in Namaka. We are almost 21 months into our operations now and our focus continues to be opening more branches to reach out to our customers. We have come a long way in a very short time in establishing a new bank. Chief Executive Satish Deb says there is lots of room to grow in the banking sector and in the end it's the customers who benefit. We are very mindful of our customers' expectations, needs, wants and aspirations. We will be innovative and fair. We will strive to bring to you fantastic customer service, convenience in banking. Director of the International Department Mark Robert was chief guest at the opening and promises Fijians that there will be more branches opening soon. Starting here is an important stage because it's the first step of red development in the West. There will be soon other branch openings uh, as we want to have a strong foot footprint um, in the region. The bank has also introduced new home loan and motor vehicle loans as well as a debit visa card accepted by any FSPOS or ATM locally and throughout the world. Akusita Tale, FBC News.
In our successful Fijian segment tonight, we take a look at the florists at the supermarket, making a living from their hobby. Sharin Lata spoke to some vendors who've been in the business for over a decade. This is by far the most colourful corner of the Suva market, attracting the attention of all who pass by. Forty women are here every Saturday selling flowers to earn a living. Among them is Meraseni Mawi, who always had a passion for gardening. Before I was staying home, and I'm staying with a lady who knows how to plant flowers and grow flowers. That's how I come to learn how to sell and do business, um, flower business. Maui has been doing this for more than 10 years and has seen the business grow, more competition, bigger variety of flowers and new friends. I've seen a new variety of flowers. Even my life changed too. And so I meet uh, more new friends uh, week after week. Oh, we don't have competition. Nowadays, because plenty of newcomers, they doing those kind of things. Like comp co competition, price competition. Getting started was a challenge for nearly all of these vendors. But as time passed, customers increased. With extensive competition, these women try and reach the market as early as possible, setting up their displays by 7 a.m. Even that requires some skill and invasion. The florist with the best flower arrangement is usually the first to sell all her flowers. People from all walks of life buy flowers here, including hoteliers, government ministers, churchgoers and hobbyists. Saturdays they decorate the church and some they're having um, like a wedding and some... Um, all sorts of uh, ceremony they use, uh, usually have on Saturdays. The most common flowers available at the Suva market are ice blue, purple orchid, ginger flowers and some other varieties. Flowers here sell from as low as $5. Some customers, that, uh, they called me at home, so I have to prepare flowers for them. Uh, like uh, today I have uh, one. So if you look at the back, you see a vase there with one, uh, with, uh, one uh, bundle of ground orchid. That's for my customer. So I'm waiting for her to come. After lunch, she will come over. Those are my customers from the office, from the hotels, like that. Eh? It's not always as flowery as one would think. Sometimes these women have to put up with discourteous customers. Customers, sometimes they came. And oh, they talk, rude, they talk rudely to us, they never say thank you, they just pick their flowers and uh, they, uh, you know, like uh, they don't expect some uh, cost of flowers to be high and they want, you know, they are not uh, enough money and they want flowers. They are always rude to us. Suva Card Flowers Association President Mary Helen Randio says, while the business is booming, they are having talks with the relevant authorities to improve facilities at the Suva market. They will come and they will say there's no flowers, uh, missing flowers from last night, as there's no proper place for us to keep our flowers in the night, no security like a proper area for keeping our flowers. And uh, a lot of grievances like water. We don't have a tap water here. We have to get water from inside. And uh, also we have to have uh, to pay in the afternoon, evening, our rubbish. We have to take our own rubbish, pay wheelbarrows to get uh, uh, our rubbish. The women here are encouraging people thinking of starting a business of their own to never give up saying treasure everything you are taught at home and try and think of ways you can use your talent. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Coming up in sports, find out who's the new champion in the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants. And Nandera Panthers out to bring back glory days. मेरा चांद मुझे आया है नजर ऐ रात जरा थम थम के गुजर 
छाया है नशा मेरे आंखों पर अरे रात जरा थम थम के गुजर रह जाए ना प्यासा मेरा प्यार मेरे बाहों में भर दे मेरा यार अरे रात जरा थम थम के गुजर अरे रात जरा थम थम के गुजर So what was the question again? Oh, why why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting. Racing. <coughs> because I am fast and slick. And plus I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself. My name is Real, your host and DJ, right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 p.m. to 7, right here on Today FM. Today's hit music. Welcome to FPC Sports National Under-20 Football Rep. Setareki Hughes scored the decisive goal for Rewa to defeat Lotoka 2-1 in the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants tournament. It was a game of two halves with the Delta Tigers dominating the opening spell. Chalindo Dakadaka reports. The youthful combination in the Rewa side proved to be a winning one in the final of the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants tournament. Vodafone Fiji Under-20 Rep. Garish Chand served this neat cross for Setareki Hughes to thunder in the winning goal. I was uh, confident that I was going to score that goal because uh, at home I used to watch all the videos, uh, all the scoring goals. So I know that was, uh, it was a lucky day today for me to score that winning goal for the uh, Delta Tigers team. The win has sealed the coach's faith in his young brigade that played gallantly throughout the competition. It's uh, uh, just putting him back into development in the spice, uh, uh, the whole football in the country is concerned. So I'm glad uh, young, young players are taking uh, up uh, instruction and uh, working towards being better every day. Credit to Lotoka. They put up a worthy effort until the final whistle, earning them their first BOG title since 2011. Talen Doda Kavak, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, in the third place playoff, Silver beat Bar by two goals to one. The Nandera Panthers rugby league side has booked a spot in the semi-finals of the Vodafone Cup top eight competition after beating Burenito Cowboys 24-12 yesterday. The Panthers outfit is determined to recapture its glory days from the 90s as the premiers of local rugby league. Chalindo Dakadaka has more. Once again, the Burenito Cowboys were unlucky to convert several try scoring opportunities in the quarterfinals of the top eight grid. The Nandera Panthers, on the other hand, scored four tries to secure a semi-final spot. What I told the team today was that see, we, can't, uh, we, we can't control what they're going to do, but we can control our defensive and our attacking pattern. Sambeto Roosters and Saru Dragons will be one of their opponents in the semi-finals next weekend, but the 17-time champions are confident that nothing will stand in their way of reclaiming lost glory. At the moment, I'm not sure who we are going meeting next, but that is something out of our control. But I think I just, uh, I think I was stressing to everybody was that whoever, whoever we are meeting next, we can control what they do. But for us, it's just, better, it's just a matter of having a, a good defensive line than a good attacking pad. Meanwhile, also progressing from the quarterfinals yesterday was McCoy Bulldogs after disposing of arch rivals Nambua Broncos 22 10 in a thrilling encounter. Talendo the Kavak, FBC Sports. The BLK Nandranga rugby side had to dig deep to beat Naita Siri 25 20 in the first Fair Brother Challenge match in Singatoka yesterday. A week after demolishing the Highlanders 57 in the Skipper Cup final, the Stallions didn't have it as easy this time around. Here's the action. 
And there to take it across on this side here is Tumbulawaki again. Gets it into our pres- uh, to Wangatamu. A dummy pass and it goes straight in. Rawasa. Rawasa will rather. Will rather pushes off it and a dummy tackle. To step over the top there. Nawangandel steps over the top, picks up and drives. Did he get it? Did he get it this time? He has. He's got it in. I think that was Nawangandel. He moves around, taps the back of Rondrano onto Omosi. And Mossy makes a dive for a gap and three goes. Unloaded it to Kurosaru. And they're up to almost on the line. A pass over the shoulders and it's space out wide. And in extra time there, the try is on. Back is Naita Siri again. Back out onto the open. The ball overrun. Nusani Roko gets it. Unloads. Gives it across wide. And here's the reward to Naita Siri. The try was made. 14-year-old Minash Farid became the youngest player to win the FMF National Under-20 Chess Championship Championship in Suva today. The Form 3 student of Yetsen Secondary School scored 5.5 out of 6 in the round-robin matches to earn first spot. William Yi came in second with William Benyon in third. Rudra Prasad collected the Under-18 grade title. Over 30 players took part in the championship which was held at Tapu City in Suva. And the next tournament in the Fiji Chess Federation calendar will be the Courts Fiji Open September 14th. Brief showers were experienced over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. Fine weather prevailed elsewhere. Another lovely day around the country with warm temperatures in most places. Monday will begin with more good weather. Fine conditions are forecast for the Fiji group. As for the further outlook, easterly winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the rest of Fiji waters, easterly winds 15 to 20 knots and moderate to rough seas. Recapping our top stories tonight. 44 Fijian troops remain captive in Syria and the Fiji military says it's still committed to the UN mission in the Golan Heights. Fijian's elections office ready to roll out for for pre-polling begins in three days. And 15 new ministers ordained into the Methodist Church of Fiji. It's now time for the Fijian Speak segment. I'm a market vendor and I want the politician to look into an issue because uh, sometimes when they come to the market they told us this and that and when we tick their names, once they reach that place, they forgot what they promised us to do. I'm a flower vendor in the supermarket and I would like the politicians to look into this matter very seriously that uh, we need trainings in this area. As uh, ladies we need to learn how to cut, train cut flowers and learn how to do propagation. I'm a market vendor and I want the politician to do what they promise us to, to do. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page FPC News. If you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or hashtag FPC News. And to receive the latest headlines on your mobile phone, take subspace FPC 2777. That's your news for tonight. I'll be back again next weekend. Good evening. Radio Fiji 2, Desh ki dharkan par. Aap pa saagat hai, bachche ki dunia mein. Hamesha ki tarha, aaj bhi. Hum aap ke liye kahaniya aur kavitaay leke raay hai. Aur bachche, aap hume call bhi kar sakte hai. Namaskar. मैं हूं पल्लवी रेडियो फिजी टू देश के धड़कन पर मंडे टू फ्राइडे तीन से लेकर चार बजे तक बच्चों की दुनिया में और चार से लेकर सात बजे तक मस्तानी शाम के सफर में शामिल रहिए मेरे साथ